The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, NeuroCare Centers, Kiko Auctioneers and Realtors, and our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Nancy Warmby, Medicine Center Pharmacy Executive Vice President, and our special guest, Mark Adams, Director of Environmental Health for the City of Canton, and a faculty member at Neomed. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good good morning. Show. Hey, how you doing? Good, Good to be here you. again. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, and it's a nice rainy day, but uh, a little bit cooler, at least from the temperatures. Well, it cleans that we out the atmosphere, doesn't it? <laughs> a little bit, yeah, it brings it down. Well, I think we finally reached summer temperatures here in Northeast Ohio, and with the heat already rising as high as ninety degrees, the topic of heat-related diseases is very important. We're talking about all ages, from toddlers to teens and seniors. Whether you're spending the weekend camping, swimming fishing or gardening, we want our listeners to stay healthy this summer. Our guest today has some great information and tips to share, and we're glad you joined us. Yeah, me too. A little bit. Thanks. As we begin our discussion, I'd like to mention we're streaming live on Facebook right now, so if you have questions, post them on our live feed, and we'll be glad to address them. Or if you're tuning into your radio dial, give us a call at 330-450-1480. So... As we mentioned in the beginning, today we're joined by Mark Adams from Canton City Health Department. We're talking about heat-related injuries. So, I know you're a veteran radio broadcaster, Mark, (laughs) so you should have maybe your own show, uh, as we talked about early on. But anyway, uh, tell our listeners a little bit about what you do in the Canton City Health Department. Well, uh, the Canton Health Department, uh, well, there are four health departments in Stark County, Canton, Massillon, Alliance, and Stark County. Um, we each have a director of environmental health, and that's my job. And uh, with that role comes uh, leading the teams that deal with uh, food safety, that deal with rabies investigations, uh, general nuisance complaint procedures, uh, a lot of liaison between uh, City Hall and uh, the environmental issues, the housing sanitation, uh, and the recycling program. So we have all of that. And any type of disease investigations that deal with, uh, will work in conjunction with an epidemiologist or with a nursing department. Um, so it's a pretty interesting job. It, uh, it gets to be, uh, there's uh, some interesting things to see, at least in 24 well, years. Well, I think the it. recycling center is really quite amazing with all the things oh, that you do, you know, that you do recycle. It's a whole team effort over there. I love it. And it's stuff all over everywhere. And I'm thinking, okay, what do you do with all this stuff? You know, I, yeah. I, I mean, literally. So mm-hmm. it's kind of nuts. So, okay, here comes summer. It's here. And, and uh, I heard him talking this morning on the radio. It was coming down to here about... Uh, Summer solstice was the longest day of summer. 14 yeah, yeah, two hours. days ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, something like that. Was it two days ago? I, th- I believe the oh, first day kidding. of summer is that, that uh, the longest day. Yeah, missed that celebration. Uh, <laughs> tell me what the top three issues it faces during the dog days of summer. Well, especially one being always trying to stay hydrated. But then we get into the two main diseases. Well, in you get heat cramps, but then heat, uh, some sort of heat stressors. Uh, but especially the two dangerous ones uh, with uh, heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Um, so it's there, there are things that we don't really we don't really anticipate, especially when we have a cooler spring. We're not really we're not used to then all of a sudden one day. I mean, just as it did this year, we had a cool May. I mean, we really did. And then all of a sudden it's 90 degrees out mm-hmm. and we're used to doing activities each day. You're going out and mow the lawn. Everything's the same. You're not really paying attention that all of a sudden the next day it's really hot. So you're not you didn't prepare yourself in April and May to be hydrated, to yeah. get it to stay cool, to take often breaks. Then you find yourself out there, and it sudden all of a sudden it catches up. Uh, and when it does, it uh, it's very difficult, especially if there's not somebody around, to be able to go backwards and and try to uh, try to help yourself out. Um, and then it be it just it catches up with you, and, and some can be turned deadly. You know, I, I can see uh, the water thing, but but also I start to see cooling towels that have come on the market a few years ago. I, yeah. I don't know um, how you feel about those. Are they helpful? Or? Well, any way that you can cool your core body, body temperature is going to work. So if it works, it wor- and if it works for you, it works. As long as you're cooling that, that, that core body temperature down, once it hits 104, 105 degrees and you start mm-hmm. getting the heat stroke, it's very difficult to do without, medical, uh, without uh, emergency medical people to be able mm-hmm. to do that. So at least with um, uh, with uh, heat stroke, uh, it's 
it, you can you'll start seeing with heat exhaustion and, and the symptoms of that being uh, you'll have some cramping some dizziness rapid heartbeat you'll have the excessive sweating um hopefully that's where you start catching that and you start pulling yourself inside and getting yourself cooled down but again with that heat stroke um do some people just just not feel it now if i'm outside like for example a couple of weeks ago when it was super hot like 90 or something like that i was outside the whole day and i was pounding water down like it was going out of style right but i but i sensed that i needed it sure and some people just kind of avoid that they they're not usually water drinkers and i wasn't really a water drinker until about a year and a half ago so yeah. i uh but it, you know you 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 think that those cooler drinks bring down your temperature and they don't the pops don't anything that's carbonated yeah. actually will dehydrate you especially beer um, so, you know, I'm sorry to... What about say, vodka it, and alcohol? And uh, all yeah, even, about even on stuff, ice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's not really going to do anything to hydrate you. Okay. So all that will take the water right out of you and make it even worse. Yeah. Um, does your body temperature actually rise? It does. Your body temperature, once it starts, if you don't treat the heat exhaustion, in, it'll progress quickly into heat stroke. And what happens there is our body's natural reaction is to sweat. That's our way to, that we keep our temperature down. It's, we have those sweat glands that we exchange air. And when air comes out, when the moisture comes out on your skin uh that's it's the body's way of then that cooling the air goes by the it evaporates off that's the way our body cools hmm. well if we get to the point where you're in heat stroke our, our body loses that ability to sweat so in heat stroke you don't actually sweat any longer your hmm. core body temperature goes above 105 degrees why, and you why go down. is that uh, just the way uh, blood vessels uh dilate inside your body's reaction uh to that to uh the failure to um, keep your core temperature down. Uh, so then there's a mixture. What happens is uh, the blood vessels get very close uh, where you're supposed to be able to take toxins out of the body. Toxins then will cross across, uh, will go across that um, blood vessel barrier mm -hmm. and then uh, go throughout the rest of your body. And um, so the toxins that are supposed to go out end up getting cycled through your rest of your organs and through the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. So we're just, it's, it progresses quickly if it's not, if it goes untreated. How oh, interesting. Do you recommend, especially with a really young child, that you check a temperature every so often? Well, not really that you'd have to check a temperature, just that you monitor the activity. So I remember growing up, I mean, we, we were pretty much, you know, you were kids that you were outside. The, the summer mm -hmm. comes, uh, my parents would come over and they would take and unplug the TV and go, you are outside, yeah, get out of, sure, our, get get out out of the house. house. And normally, I know that I did not grow up in a house where we stopped and we had water. We just didn't. I mean, we came in and we had pop. We got, I mean, but we lived in the woods, so it, you know, we always had trees. We never really got overheated ever, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, you know, that's, and I know we'll end up talking about my brother here in a, in a little bit. That's not drinking water. That's, it, it, that's a, it's hard to get over that uh, learned response that you just, you really just power through things and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and that's what we don't want we want people to recognize that and not power through go ahead and stop have some water it's not an unmanly thing to do grab some mm -hmm. uh get that body cooled down take a break uh especially uh that's you gotta you gotta bring that temperature down and if uh if you see somebody and it's a hot day and they're not sweating it's you need to get them get them cooled down hmm. so Heart diseases are definitely on top uh, now through August. Can you expand a little more? And I hear there's something that affected your family recently. Yeah, and um, thanks for asking. It's because I, I want to be able to talk about that as much as possible. Um, my brother was a uh, down in Florida. He's a landscaper, uh, and just four weeks ago, he was out working all day. It was Memorial Day, and um, he had. Uh, well, we'll get to his medical conditions in a second, but he worked all day and then called me. Um, he sounded real tired on the. He sound, sounded tired on the phone, and then uh, about three hours later, had a massive heart attack and passed away. Um, some of the things, you know, maybe maybe a 25 year old male or female would be able to do something like that all day, but at 47, yeah. uh, he had also allowed uh, medical conditions to go untreated. Uh, so he was not really working with the doctors that had said maybe, hey, you look at, you know, looks, you have some sugar issues, you got some diabetes. Mm -hmm. He was also having some heart issues, and he wasn't taking those medications. Uh, six medications alone to deal with those two issues, and he wasn't taking them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, and Kenny was um, Kenny was definitely a, a, a bravado kind of kid. Uh, he was uh, it, nobody can touch me. It's um, I'm strong. I'm I'm healthy. I've heard that before. And, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, and, and luckily I, I went down and saw him a couple times this year, and I even talked to him. I said, "Hey, look, you know, you've really." You, know, you at least have that conversation and i with someone that you know if they're if it looks like they can that they're not addressing their medical issues and had mm -hmm. that conversation with them twice and 
uh, he just you just sometimes don't realize what's happening to your body because you still think you're 16 and and bulletproof, mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. wow. So, uh, but he's um, uh, you know at least a, a better place, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, we, um, I've made sure that my kids learn from that. And that if I can talk to anybody else about it, make sure that they learn from that, too, so that they can make sure that it doesn't happen to them. And talk to family members at the same time if they see that they're under some medical duress, that they at least try to get that issue, that, that addressed and talk with a medical professional and, and actually take the medication, mm-hmm. especially if they've got an outside job like that. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your brother, Thanks. Mark. That's really, really a shame. He could be alive today if he had yeah. paid attention to yeah. what the professionals were telling him. Yep. Um, so... Tell us about the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Well, when that when that happens, so we heat exhaustion is it's easy to get there. I mean, if we we're outside working, and it doesn't have to be super hot out, because um, things like that can also happen even in the winter. We can overstress our heart, and um, uh, but with the heat exhaustion, we have that we have that rapid um, that rapid heartbeat. We have the excessive sweating. Our temperature is going up, but it's still manageable. We can cool ourselves down. We can use, uh, we can put ice packs on us, uh, wet towels. Uh, the problem, though, especially on a hot, humid day, when we get to August, because you mentioned the dog days of summer, when we get to August uh, and it's humid out, or even though we might be hydrating, if we can't sweat properly, because remember, like I said, it, uh, we sweat, and if it uh, the normal process is that we evaporate that that moisture off of our skin. Well, when it's humid out. We can't do that. Yeah. So we sweat, but we just stay wet because it's, and we're not evaporating. So they can even faster turn into that heat stroke where we stop sweating. We stop uh, being able to. I remember to, this from my college courses. Yeah. <laughs> Evaporation is a cooling process. It's a cooling process. And with, <laughs> of course, with our animals, we got to watch animals too. Sure. Uh, very important. They don't have sweat glands. Uh, that's why they pant. Yeah. Uh, and it, they can absolutely, uh, if animals are out either in extreme cold or extreme heat, you got to watch them. Bring them in. I mean, they're, they're your pets. Uh, you know, take care of them. Get them out of that. Don't let them in direct sunlight at all. They'll just, uh, that it's something that happens. And also, um, it's happened quite a bit and quite more often. Um, now, at least if it's a sporting related uh, issue, that a lot of, it, it's happened so many times now that a lot of, uh, especially younger groups and with universities, they're at least more in tune to it. It's not something where, oh, wow, I did I, that. They didn't have a program put together 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. They're trying to address that to make sure that that doesn't that doesn't happen. But um, but with the hot car thing, that's happening. That's not supposed to happen as often as it does. Yeah. And it is something that is happening quite more often than it did 30 years ago. I mean, it's not. The numbers are up all across the board with that. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's. Uh, it's something that we have to watch out for, especially with pets or children left in the car, anybody left in the car. A cracked window does not cool it down. If right. there's no airflow, a car's temperature in a 70-degree day in direct sunlight in 20 minutes can reach 120 degrees. Wow. So you're baking anybody that's inside of there. You're just baking them in there, and that's a, it's a horrible way to go. They start to sweat, starts with heat exhaustion, and it goes right to heat stroke, and there's no way to cool that core body temperature down for them until they get unless they get to a hospital. I think we got to take a break here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. Of course, we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression hosiery. All our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are on sale this week and next week at very low prices, just $69.95. Call or stop by our local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. If your goals are to spend less and be healthier in 2017, then start the new year right by choosing a primary care physician. 
People with a primary care physician generally save on overall health care costs and enjoy better health than those without one. About half of U.S. adults have one or more chronic health conditions. A primary care physician can help you prevent or control chronic disease. Plus, they can refer you to specialists and ensure everyone involved in your care is on the same page. In short, having a primary care physician means more accessible, affordable health care, not just in 2017, but for a lifetime. Request an appointment with a Mercy Primary Care Physician now. Offices are conveniently located in Canton, North Canton, Maslin, Alliance, Carrollton, and Uniontown. Visit cantonmercy.org slash primary hyphen care to request an appointment online or call Mercy's Healthcare Connection at 330-489-1333. We're bursting at the seams at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. More merchandise than we've ever had. Lots of new stuff has just arrived and is already selling fast. Bath towels, Dr. Scholl's tennis shoes, flip-flops, sandals, gas grills, tons of new toys, sunscreen, sunglasses and readers, flower pots, bird feeders, and much, much more. A trip to the Half Off and Hot by Store in Lewis is an event as well as a shopping experience. Where else can you find a gas grill for 99 bucks or flip-flops for 50 cents? We're next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy, a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy. Do you know that we partner with Mercy Medical Center to provide low-cost blood screenings on our pharmacies? You can choose from the following screenings. Thyroid for $5, lipid profile for 8 total cholesterol for 2 glucose for 2 and A1C for 10 These are the same tests you would receive from your physician. Please give us a call at 330-454-8772 for dates and locations. Come see us at your local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Health Mart caring for you and about you. We are back. Nancy and I today are joined by Mark Adams, Environmental Health Director for the Canton City City of Canton and a yeah. faculty member at Neobet. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, we are discussing health-related diseases. If you have a question, give us a call at 330-450-1480. So just briefly, uh, what about checking on your neighbor and ailments and, and things that contribute to this heat issue right any time that our body is compromised with any type of disease it, it anything else can happen to it it makes it easier for any other any other type of issue especially with heat to be able to affect us and cold so those are two things that, the extremes we just can't if by just recognizing that if we have let's say we have some uh, coronary issues just by recognizing that and and then taking it a little bit easier, it doesn't make you less than anybody to be able to do that and just to be able to admit it and say, listen, I can't really exert myself that much because you want to you want to be around. I mean, it's uh, you definitely want to experience life as much as you can, but there are some limitations. And I'm I'm, I'm kind of getting there. I'm I'm getting to my <laughs> where I can admit I might. So what are you? Thirty seven years old? I'm, or I'm forty eight. I'm I'm, oh, I'm going on. I'm getting geez. on fifty. <laughs> I'm getting there. That's I'm so really close. an old guy. <laughs> So if we're checking on friends or neighbors, can we break it down a little bit by, I have my first grandchild. Uh, well, congratulations. Thank All right. you. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're looking at an infant or if you're checking on your neighbors and they're elderly, yeah. what should we be looking for? Well, what, this is the thing. When it starts to get, uh, especially humid day, 85 and above, if we've got neighbors that are usually shut-in neighbors, we really need to start talking to people and being more neighborly. And, and we have become an Internet society and uh, where we're just not making that physical or direct eye contact with everybody. And now it's we you know, we only hear the a lot of times the, the bad in the news of what happens. But there's still the, you know, the 99 percent out there that that you make that interaction, you can stop or prevent something from happening. A lot of people are now are seeing that their children left in a car or a dog and the, or a cat and they're, they're breaking a window and, and making sure that some that help gets there. Well, we need to do that with the elderly too. A lot of times, just by having conversations, you learn whether, they're, whether or not they have air conditioning. And my grandmother, we, we, she didn't have air conditioning. I lived with her for a short period of time. That's a whole different radio show. But uh, uh, for about a year, and she did not have air conditioning. But that house always stayed cool. Well, they were raised not on air conditioning, and they knew how to keep a house cool and how to get the airflow going through a house and which windows to open. Well, a lot of times that's not that's not always happening. Uh, it's a different group of elderly that were not around. You know, they were. Uh, this group of elderly now 20 years later is a group that air conditioning was prevalent it was it's after the depression and um so it's uh keeping a house cool is not a, a something they were, they were taught anymore so they're they're 
anywhere between 60 and, and 85 years old being locked in a house and that's taxing when you're mm-hmm. when you start to get there and and it's just you're not you're not 25 anymore you're not uh, you're not you're not 15 so it's uh, just check on them knock on the door talk to them see how they're doing um, if you haven't seen them come out and you see all the windows shut, you've got to know it's going to be hot in there. And even though they're staying in the shade, uh, mm-hmm. it's still going to turn into a hot box. And Ohio is a difficult state, especially to sit in the shade and get cool, because once July 15th to 20th hits through September 1st, it's going to be humid. Mm-hmm. And a house will not cool down overnight. If you start, yeah. if, the, if you watch the news and it still shows it light green and it's temperate uh, humidity <laughs> overnight, that means it's still going to be 70-some degrees during the night, and that is not going to let you cool off. And if it's that humid outside, it's going to be that humid inside, and you're not going to be able to sweat and get that uh, and get that cooling effect that you should be able to get naturally. So, yeah, definitely check on everybody. Knock on those doors. Talk to everybody. Everything will be fine. Nobody will hurt you if you just go check on your neighbor. Hey, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we've never met before. Hey, we've never met before. We live next to you. It should never be like that. You you know, we should definitely to, go. tell your dog to quit barking. Yeah, talk to everybody. It's not a bad thing. Talking to people is not a bad thing, I promise. It's, it's just not. Uh, you, if you get yelled at, you get yelled at. Um, I got yelled at the other day by going to talk to someone, but uh, I was just doing my job. <laughs> so. Well, I think we're transitioning from heat to bugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And with the heat, come the bugs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about bugs here a couple times, uh, and I like to always bring them up, uh, especially because uh, we always like to, especially mosquitoes. Um, and the new thing that we have not talked about is the possibility or potential for Zika virus. I mean, that was something that came out in the news last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, local public health, at least here, uh, you know, we've got our health commissioner, Jim Adams, and uh, he and I are in, in tune that we never really wait for somebody to tell us you should start looking for something. And uh, so when Zika started happening during the Olympics, everybody, up, a lot of people up here said, oh, you know, that's a that's a mosquito that just lives down there. That's no, not no, going to yeah, come right. up in. It's not going <laughs> to come out the United States. And we kind of talked last year and we said, you know what, you know, we're just not going to wait around for it to happen. We're going to start doing some sampling. Uh, for that specific mosquito, a mosquito up here, because we don't want to get surprised or caught by it. And then what happened uh, uh, six months later is they started having Zika in Florida. Yeah, shows up, yeah. And uh, and then the other thing is that they started then spraying, uh, and they started spraying a very toxic uh, product. Well, we don't want to have to do that up here. We don't want to have to do that. And I know we'll end up talking more in length about our program that we have up here and how we try to keep. Uh, we don't try. We try not to put chemicals in the air. We haven't had to do that in a number of years. But we try to do it with all um, all surveillance method, but not only mosquitoes, but a couple other bugs we like to talk about that spread disease is our fleas. A lot of people don't know why fleas, uh, and that's you know it's okay that they don't know why fleas are such a danger. Um, and uh, it, they carried plague and they killed two thirds mm-hmm. of the world's known population mm-hmm. uh, with the Yersinia pestis, the, uh, the little uh, mm-hmm. disease they had inside of them. So, uh, and uh, the other one being cockroaches. So uh, we'll definitely hit on those. Uh, we, we should not be living, living with those, and we'll talk about palmetto bugs and cockroaches. <laughs> All right. Bottom of the hour is here. You're listening to Time for the News. Thanks for joining us this morning on Health Matters at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties. Of course, we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression hosiery. All our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are on sale this week and next week at very low prices, just $69.95. Call or stop by our local Medicine Center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. We're bursting at the seams at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. More merchandise than we've ever had. Lots of new stuff has just arrived and is already selling fast. Bath towels, Dr. Scholl's tennis shoes, flip-flops, sandals, gas grills, tons of new toys, sunscreen, sunglasses and readers, flower pots, bird feeders, and much, much more. 
A trip to the half off and hot by Storm Lewis is an event as well as a shopping experience. Where else can you find a gas grill for 99 bucks or flip flops for 50 cents? We're next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. Men like Paul White love studio arts and glass. Why? We wrap all of his gifts. Gifts like hand-blown paper whites, ornaments, jewelry, and stunning sterling silver and precious stones like amethyst and crystals. After 30 years, Studio Arts and Glass is known for creating and restoring stunning stained glass. Just ask Paul White. Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. We're bursting at the seams at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. More merchandise than we've ever had. Lots of new stuff has just arrived and is already selling fast. Bath towels, Dr. Scholl's tennis shoes, flip-flops, sandals, gas grills, tons of new toys, sunscreen, sunglasses and readers, flower pots, bird feeders, and much, much more. A trip to the Half Off and Hot by Storm Lewis is an event as well as a shopping experience. Where else can you find a gas grill for 99 bucks or flip-flops for 50 cents? We're next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. Of course we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression hosiery. All our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are on sale this week and next week at very low prices, just $69.95. Call or stop by our local Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're talking about heart-related diseases with Mark Adams, Director of Environmental Health for the City of Canton. We have a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. So, Mark, we're talking about bugs again. (laughs) Bugs. And um, I'm glad you brought up uh, about the tick that mm-hmm. your husband found because that's the other one. Ticks, fleas, and mosquitoes are the ones that we that we know they'll spread disease. The ones that we have to make sure that we watch ourselves for, and w- and especially related to this type of weather. Um, it, it's uh, our animals go outside and they're very susceptible to uh, bringing a tick, or they can bring uh, fleas back inside the house. Um, certainly, uh, as far as fleas go, certainly consult uh, a veterinarian to be able to make sure that you're treating an animal properly. Just don't go buy a product and read the directions and do that. Um, but uh, with uh, ticks, um, especially in, in Ohio, tick diseases are on the rise, as well as our ticks. Um, it's not. Now, there's, is that related to the fact we've got more deer running around? And, and, uh, you well, know, I guess that depends all, on who you talk to. I wasn't right. able to find any of them this year. <laughs> well, you, you know, oh my gosh, they're all they're living in my mm-hmm. daughter's backyard. Yeah, they are all around, um, and it's uh, well. There are different uh, species of yeah, ticks, so sure. it's it's actually the environment itself. We're it's we're getting back into we into that environment where um, we're going back out and playing in the in the. It's now it's now popular to do it. So the last uh, thirty years has been more of a push to get people into the outdoors and getting experiencing the outdoors. Right. And um, uh, even look what they've done to RVs. I mean, look how nice that, yeah. they, <laughs> that they've made some of these and RVs. House. <laughs> people are selling their homes and living then in an RV. And yeah. it's so people that normally weren't outside are outside. Families mm-hmm. are getting back out there. So they're, it's all good things. Um, and that's exactly what you want. You want to get out and experience everything that's out there and, and, and look at these different parks. Ohio has hundreds of them. And, um, but uh, with, with ticks, uh, you've really got to check yourself because ticks are actually pretty small. They're mm-hmm. smaller than a bed, uh, one species smaller than a bed bug. Yeah. Um, and so you just really have to watch yourself. Even if you have clothing on, uh, you can, once you're taking the clothing off, it can get off you and then, or get it off your clothing and then Jump climb on onto your skin. skin. Yes. Yeah. And they're one of uh, fleas and uh, ticks uh, and uh, mosquitoes are three uh, insects that actually wait for you. They, they want you, certain species of mosquitoes want you as a vector. Ticks want you. What do you mean they, they wait for they you. They wait for you. They want you. The, the ticks sit at the shaft of of a grass uh, of grass, and they wait for you to come by or an animal come by so that they can get on. They're making, they're, me, making them sound like I got a brain. They want your blood. Uh, they want. You, they want to suck your blood. That that's what they want, and they want to be able to give you what they have. They want to share their diseases with you, and Great. you just you just got to be a little bit careful. And uh, you My know, pal. a lot of people see an insect and they get that little freak out thing. That's okay. You can you can do that. You can do you. I mean, it's. 
it's uh you don't have to pick up every single insect and, and be cool with it and then pet it you know so it's you know there's some that you don't want on you and um, we start to get relaxed especially uh, with mosquito uh, control with our with our personal uh, safety and you really do need to watch out for this I mean it's not that there are emerging diseases dealing with mosquitoes every single day but when it comes to West Nile even though we haven't talked about it in a long time it's still there it's still prevalent in in our um, in our community and throughout Ohio and it's something that will absolutely kill us. I mean, it's it'll kill us at our age. It's not something that just affects, mo- like most mosquito diseases, the elderly or infirm or young children. It goes after that middle age group. That's what made it so, uh, so much of a danger is because here is a disease that actually hits those that are healthy. And um, luckily, there's a lot of prevention efforts out there, especially with health departments, that has reduced that or minimized that. But, you know, wearing the long sleeves, using a, a product that contains the de- but using it with according to the directions, it's not a mouthwash. It's not a spray for the eyes. You know, you really got to read those directions. You can't. More is not always better. Um, and limiting the time that you're out uh, it, in um, for the day, whether it's the sun, uh, the sunset or sun. Uh, but the main thing is habitat elimination. Habitat elimination is the one way to get rid of mosquitoes, and I can prove it uh, because it's actually a program that works very well in Canton. Mm-hmm. And um, I can give you an idea that when uh, back in the day, when before we took over the recycling center, uh, they used to they used to drop off about seventy five hundred tires a year there. And um, oh, gosh, <laughs> and uh, the difference now though back then is we used to have to spray. We would spend about thirty thousand dollars a year on adulticides. Mm-hmm and spray the city just to reduce the mosquito population. Hmm. By changing our process of thinking and getting rid of the habitat, just the habitat alone, we once we took over that center and we started going out and we would actually pick up tires, community services from the hmm. courts picks up tires, we have it still open by re- even only instead of being open 60 hours a week and now being only open 12 we actually went from collecting 7500 tires to nearly 60,000 in a year well, well, so, what what do they do with the tires i mean there was a talk they were crushing them and throwing them in the highway well that's mix. a great question they tried that mix. but the roads caught on fire uh they, <laughs> but uh because they so they we're not doing don't. that anymore huh? no and so <laughs> what where they go the majority and the vast majority because i get asked a lot what happens to those tires why not playgrounds well uh, there's just not a huge market for that so so where they go is a tire monofill, and that's down in Minerva at Liberty Tire. That they, for one day, I mean, one day we think that maybe tires might be worth something. We know where they're all buried, so it's a monofill. Only one thing can be buried there. Mm. That's where they're all at. Wow. Well. So each, you know, states have well, monofills. Well, isn't that the outfit that was making mulch out of them? They were grinding Some them up for mulch. Yeah, and there's there's the fine mulch. There's mm-hmm. the there's uh, they'll but, put it into an aggregate. But, but they, the problem with that is it holds the heat. And it it keeps does. The roots too hot. So, it does. The and plant. yeah, they they did some practice roads down in Arizona or something like that. And there's a little fire. Yeah. Uh, rapid oxidation. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, it, it's uh so. You know, maybe one day we'll figure out what they're good for, but right now that's where they go. Well, I understand they can't really grind them up because there's metal in them. There is. Okay. They're, well, they're steel belted. And, and, and that's the big problem. Yeah, and you can't, a lot of people have asked, you know, can't, why can't a tire be recycled? As in, why can't it be melted back down? Well, once it goes through the vulcanization process, you've changed that chemical property of, that, of the basic rubber. Okay. So there's nothing, you can't break that down, right? at least right now, back into its natural uh, state of rubber, right? Uh, that was farmed out from wherever it was farmed. Hmm. So yeah, you, we can't do much with so it. we got 40,000 million tires all over the world being buried all over everywhere. That, at le- well, with that at least, I mean, <laughs> oh, uh, hopefully we're not sticking. I mean, they were doing, they, they do have artificial reefs uh, with tires. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's at least with them, with them buried, they're not creating an environmental hazard to the water because Fire, they're not breaking yes, down and right, causing sure. problem with the water. They're not, mosquitoes aren't living them. They are the number one receptacle for mosquitoes. That's where they, a mosquito, when we put out a trap, if we just had a really bad, if we didn't do anything with mosquitoes and we stuck out a trap, and a trap is really easy, it's just a, essentially a bucket with a fan in it that sucks up the female mosquito as it goes in to lay the eggs. Mm. Well, back in the day when we only were collecting 7,500 tires a year, we would collect 400 mosquitoes per trap per night, and we would set out 9 to 11 traps. Mm. We, we can barely get 400 a month. Uh, but once you start eliminating tires, You've eliminated your mosquito problem. We haven't sprayed in five years. Okay, so you yeah. got tires down there. You're taking back, I think, three per person a year or a week. Twelve. Or twelve. Is it twelve? 12? Yep. Okay. You got water in them, or how do you? Most of the time they do. They have water in them, but as long as we can get the, we get them. We've we cycle two forty yard containers out per week. 
they end up going down to Minerva. So, so it's, they don't hang around there. They don't hang around at all. Okay. And they don't hang around outside. And if they do hang around outside, uh, you can act, treat them with really a vegetable oil solution as long as you pr- create a film Just over the water. Just kind of pour it in there. Okay. Right. And it's so if some people have, uh, I've seen there where they paint them and make them, Drill holes if you're going to do that so that the water can get out of them. Yeah, Bird sure. baths are huge and pails of water. Turn your pails over. Whenever we're uh, going out and doing property abatements or nuisance abatements, we'll tip your – if we're cleaning up a property, we'll actually tip your um, – if we see one next door or something mm-hmm. like that, we'll tip the uh, the pail over. Or yeah. we'll go and talk with the resident about every week recycling the water that's in a bird bath. Uh, sure. Th- millions of mosquito larvae can be laid there. Uh, and start growing and become mosquitoes. So get a fountain. Uh-huh. Yes, and okay. if you get a fountain to agitate the water, they can't. They don't like agitated water. Okay. Um, and a lot of people have asked, you know, depending on is it if it's is it going to be a worse uh, season for mosquitoes? The weather, while it is dependent, I mean, really, the only way to kill off the all mosquitoes is if we had a deep freeze during the summer. All the weather really is going to affect is how early they emerge. And and you might get a larger, just a slightly larger <coughs> crop, but otherwise the cycle is pretty much. Is pretty much defined of how how bad it's going to be, and it's not totally dependent on weather unless it's an extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though the weather was a little bit colder this year, we still had hatches, you still had regular mosquitoes, and we still have them out there. You still have ticks out there. They might take an extra week to come out. So as ticks start to really come out in March, April. That's when their activity starts to happen. Grass starts to grow at that point. People start going out of the woods. That's when they're they start to. Uh, become a little bit more active. Same with fleas. Uh, April, May, they're going to want to try to find somebody to eat. Well, actually, they want your animals, but uh, they're, uh, they, they'll they get on you and they'll start biting you too if they really have no other source uh, to be able to um, uh, get on you uh, or be able to eat. Um, all three easily preventable. Uh, it, it just takes a little bit of uh, personal care to make sure that the, their diseases don't affect you. And um, it's uh, the, the, it doesn't really cost any money to be able to do that. It just really comes down to uh, watching your pets, watching your activity outside, what time you're outside, and um, by and reducing the or eliminating their habitat out, you know, outdoors at all. And it it really works. It can absolutely work. It's proven. How about tips for getting that tick off if you find it when you come in? Okay, so if you're not comfortable with taking the tick off because you have to get it at the head. You cannot take just the body off. Mm-hmm. If it's on you for, you've got you've got some time. If you got a tick on you, discover it. And let's say that you were in the woods uh, at 6 a.m. You walked out of the woods at 6 a.m. on one day. If you got, you got all day. I mean, you got almost 24 hours before that tick can transmit any Lyme disease or Rocky Mountain spotted fever to you. I mean, you got some time. Um, you need to get it out at the head. You're going to need to use tweezers, and you need to pull it straight out, not to the side. You need to pull it straight out. Make sure you have the head. The head cannot be left in there. It can still transmit Lyme disease, and it can also cause an infection then at that point um, because it burrows inside, and it, do- and it does not have a proboscis like a, a long nose like a like a mosquito would that, um, that's going into you. Um, this one, it's got to pull out. So, But if you're uncomfortable with it, You can either have somebody else that that does it that feels comfortable or go seek medical attention and have them do it. But go do it that day and let somebody know. If you want the tick identified, you can bring it, if you bring the whole tick uh, to us at the health department and we'll identify it for you um, and let you know if it's even a tick that can carry a certain disease and maybe not. I mean, you might be good to go. Um, You may not really have uh, any issues to worry about. We're, We're there to try to give you some peace of mind. And I really don't care if you live out in the city. If you live in the city or the county, I'll I'll look at your tick for you. <laughs> <laughs> I look at your mosquito. Look at your tick. Okay. Well, why don't we take our final break here? You are listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and uh, maybe you're watching the program live on Facebook. And we're glad you're with us. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. If your goals are to spend less and be healthier in 2017, then start the new year right by choosing a primary care physician. People with a primary care physician generally save on overall health care costs and enjoy better health than those without one. About half of U.S. adults have one or more chronic health conditions. 
A primary care physician can help you prevent or control chronic disease. Plus, they can refer you to specialists and ensure everyone involved in your care is on the same page. In short, having a primary care physician means more accessible, affordable health care, not just in 2017, but for a lifetime. Request an appointment with a Mercy Primary Care Physician now. Offices are conveniently located in Canton, North Canton, Maslin, Alliance, Carrollton, and Uniontown. Visit cantonmercy.org slash primary hyphen care to request an appointment online or call Mercy's Healthcare Connection at 330-489-1333. Are you sleepy, fatigued, feeling less energized than normal? Are you waking the house or shaking the roof with your loud snoring? Let NeuroCare Sleep Center help. They have friendly staff waiting to take care of you and are there to answer your questions about sleep. NeuroCare offers home sleep testing as well as in-lab testing. Their board-certified sleep physicians can meet all of your sleep care needs at any of their three convenient locations in Canton, Orville, and Alliance. Please call NeuroCare at 330-244-2500. That's 330-244-2500. We're bursting at the seams at the Half Off and Out by Storm Louisville. More merchandise than we've ever had. Lots of new stuff has just arrived and is already selling fast. Bath towels, Dr. Scholl's tennis shoes, flip-flops, sandals, gas grills, tons of new toys, sunscreen, sunglasses and readers, flower pots, bird feeders, and much, much more. A trip to the Half Off and Out by Storm Lewis is an event as well as a shopping experience. Where else can you find a gas grill for 99 bucks or flip-flops for $0.50? Cents? We're next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy in Louisville. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. Of course, we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression hosiery. All our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are on sale this week and next week at very low prices, just $69.95. Call or stop by our local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Nancy and I are joined today by Mark Adams, Environmental Health Director for the City of Canton and a faculty member at Neomed. We're discussing heat-related diseases, bugs, and all kinds of stuff. I have a question. Post it on our Facebook live feed or give us a call at 330-450-1480. So we are in the last segment of our show. You know, Mark, we were talking at the break a little bit about tire swings, yeah. and I know you had a tip about those. Yeah, make sure you cut the holes in the bottom of it. Tire swings are good. You know, have those in your backyard, that's fine. Uh, just cut holes in the bottom, let the rainwater go out. Uh, not only will your children have a wet bottom if they go to use it if you don't do that, but then you can also be creating a very nice living habitat for mosquitoes. So, yeah, just a little bit of care. It takes a five minutes to drill those holes in there bigger big enough holes to you know let water drain out of them so yeah so where are uh, we at we've been jumping around so much i don't even know where we're at the strip. <laughs> are we, talking, see, we still talking about bugs or where we, are we? we covered our bugs and and we, you know I, we've talked about bed bugs before too um and yeah they're the problem is still as bad as we've discussed before um we uh we have tried to get out as much information as possible uh we've had a lot of uh, what I want to make sure that everybody remembers is that uh, the bed bugs themselves, they don't spread disease that we know of, but they are of the mosquito or the, of the mosquitoes, of the insects that we deal with. They're the toughest one to get rid of, the most expensive one to get rid of. It's, and it's prevention is easy, but yet sometimes it's, un- I can only say this for a lot of people. Don't pick up stuff on the side of the road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stop picking up stuff or furniture and things like that and just take it into your house, even if you don't see them. It uh, just stop. That is how they're spreading in Canton. Is that their people are seeing something they want that's on the side of the road from a move out or a set out? They're putting it inside their house and then they're calling me two months later, wondering how they got bed bugs and they don't travel <laughs> overseas. And I'm like, well, did you pick up a box or did you pick up something? Well, I I, I got this couch on the side of the road. No, stop, <laughs> stop grabbing that furniture. Um, and you could you, furnish your whole house on the side of the road. You, no. you, and then some. <laughs> um, so, you know, then it's, you know, because remember, it's going to be about a dollar a square foot to uh, either treat your home or, wow. or superheat it. So it's an expensive process and can take a, a year to get rid of them. And it, in some cases, you don't even know you have a bed bug issue for a year. And mm-hmm. it, by then, it's gotten so bad. Mm-hmm. Now, we did have a program where we would go out and um, uh, help people with some natural products 
uh, be able to that they would purchase that to be able to get rid of their problem. And we've had so far two two success stories of, of families that we have worked with. Again, families that had no clue, had no idea that uh, that uh, they did nothing that was out of the ordinary. It just it, not, and then one was an occupational. And the other one was they grabbed some furniture. And it's quite yeah. possible that if you go to somebody's house that, that has bed bugs, and if they, even if they don't know it, I mean, they're not doing something on purpose. They don't wait. For the, the, the resident there doesn't go, I'm going to invite my friend over so that they can get bed bugs <laughs> from my house. You know, they don't do that. I know we don't have people that do okay. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, but it's something because you don't know that you've got them, that then that person sits down, they bring a purse or they bring a bag in with them, and then they're, they're opportunists. They'll go from one spot go to another so it's uh uh certainly uh it's it's not that easy to get you got to be there all day but it is it is easy it, it's easy enough to be able to get one to go from one house to another they will go into a multi-unit complex they will go from one to another i get yeah. a lot of calls from some multi-unit housing where they're like you know but i'm a shut-in i n- nobody visited me i don't understand yeah. how this happened and um, and i'm that first question is are you in a multi-unit complex and then they will go they won't go from house to house, but they will go from unit to unit. Mm-hmm. We had a caller from Mary in Louisville who's concerned about uh, her pets. She does not, I don't think, have a fenced-in yard, and she's worried about her pets being exposed to ticks. Okay, sure. Uh, oh, what to pre- uh, prevent? Oh, I don't know yeah. you're putting her on. Uh, <laughs> Mary, I don't. Um, it's, uh, now, it's okay that you don't have fenced-in yard. I don't either. Uh, all you need to do is just do a check on your pets. If they're going through high weeds and grass, ticks, you know, the other thing is is they're not absolutely everywhere. They're not what we would call ubiqu- ubiquitous, and they're everywhere. It doesn't mean that they're in every field if there's a field. Uh, but if you're letting them go through high weeds and grass, if it's short grass, forget it, but don't worry, worry about it. I mean, it's really, you know, fleas, yes. But um, if it's uh, if it's high weeds and grass and you're letting them go through, yeah, you need to do a check on them. And you need to do an overall check. The, the legs, back. I mean, it's not something where they just like to go to the stomach. They're, uh, a, a flea or a tick will be will go anywhere on them. Uh, it, but they're not that hard to spot. Uh, and uh, with uh, uh, long hair uh, pets, a little bit more difficult. They have a, a good place to hide. Um, at least with uh, fleas, you can usually put a, pull away some of the fur around the tummy, mm-hmm. and you'll be able to see if they got fleas. Uh, with ticks, they can be anywhere on that animal. They're trying to get to the blood vessels as fast as they can. And they're not that fast, but they can get there. So that's the precaution you would take with them, just to do some checking on them. You know, I read somewhere, I don't know if it's accurate or not, that they tend to be around ears and on humans that they tend to be around hairlines. No, they're, they're going to go wherever they can get into that blood meal and not be disturbed. So arms, because I'm going to tell you, uh, when I was in the service and we were both in the army, uh, uh, the, I know where they, they go. I know where they go, and, <laughs> and they'll go wherever they can go, wherever they can get to the the blood meal, they'll go there. And uh, that was my first experience at 17. I never want to see that again. So, <laughs> just uh, it wasn't on me though. Hey, yeah. I, so I just don't want to see that again. Uh, I see you brought some students with you today. What's their role? Uh, I did. Their role here. Their, their role here is to educate us. One's from Neomed, and the other one's from Kent State. Uh, one's uh, going to be a doctor. One's a, M- a master's of public health student. And uh, we invite them in to, we try to provide some education, but mainly what, what happens with them is they come out and they, they educate us. So we have uh, quite a few students with us, so, well, two of them here today, and uh, that's okay. Cache and uh, Megan, and um, uh, they'll, they're, in through, they're doing an emergency preparedness class right now. Uh, we'll talk about uh, first responder uh, operations level this afternoon, and then we put them in gear. Next week we do incident command, and then after that we do a raid on a house. Uh, we teach them how to wear that gear and the, some of the mm-hmm. responsibilities that we have uh, as the law enforcement portion of environmental health that we have to do. We'll be doing that next Wednesday, mm-hmm. um, and because of students, uh, that's where we had a, we got an idea uh, two years ago about the SWAT program. Uh, it's they have been able to they have been able to change the way we perform our our function in public health. And um, a student we had two years ago, Jordan Phillips, uh, she uh, put together a project for her class or for her um, for her master's on a syringe exchange program, and uh, it's uh, kicks off today. I mean, it's something that uh, that uh, we're proud of and glad that it's uh, going to happen. It just uh, uh, explain why we're doing that. Okay. Well, H- HIV and HCV infection rates among uh, intravenous drug users is skyrocketing, and it's uh, very bad in this area. We are in, uh, an area of uh, – we 
uh, we're compiled with eight other counties, and it's the worst here in the Canton metro area. And um, and the only you know we you've tried all the other methods of trying to reduce uh, drug use. It's just not the infection rates are. It's not working. So the infection rates are going up. We're out of time. We got about four hundred questions. <laughs> I appreciate you letting me talk. About it. <laughs> Mark Adams, Environmental Health Director of the City of Canton. It was great information you shared today. Special thank you to our sponsors: Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, Kiko Auctioneers and Realtors, Neurocare Center, and our technical producer J.D. DeAngelis. As always, thank you, listeners, for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Next week, our guest will be will join us from Mercy Medical Center's Wound and Hyperbaric Center. Kimberly Landsberger will talk with us about wounds that won't heal. Have a healthy week. We'll see you again right here on Friday, next Friday at 9 a.m., right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.